Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back into the studio. This week's video is going to be an excerpt from one of my Patreon videos. If you want to support the channel and watch the full video, which is over an hour long, head over to patreon.com forward slash You'll find a link in the description below. Enjoy. The goals of this video, this first session, is going to be very simple, yet quite difficult, and most importantly, very crucial. I have a very specific process that I teach, and this is not something, the way that I sculpt is not something that I come up with on the spot. This process begins by observing our model from the profile view, or the side view, I'll use those two terms interchangeably. I deal in very simple terms here at the beginning. What I'm concerned with is left and right, up and down. So from the side view, I'm not attempting to deal with any amount of depth, which from the front view would be considered widths of course. This is because we cannot with any sense of certainty observe depths, but left to right up and down we can observe with empirical certainty. So my first mission is going to be to simply represent this profile as best as I can. In order to do so I start with sculpting my model's profile, which you'll see a diagram of on the screen right now. You can see the red line, that's essentially what I'm trying to replicate. There are many reasons for beginning with the profile actually, let me explain some of them to you. Here is the contour from the profile with the image of our model Stefano removed. We can still recognize who this is pretty easily, especially if you know who Stefano is from, from previously. Here is an image of the contour from the front. From the front, it's kind of a head shape, an egg shape, without too much there to tell us who this is actually. So the profile is much more recognizable from a very simple view, just a line, than the front view is. Another good reason is one I preach a lot. You'll hear this in many of my videos and that is widths are forgiving, heights are not. From the profile view all our heights are present, all the heights that we can see from the front are present from the profile view as well, and they're even easier to see. Our widths are obviously not easy to see from the profile view, but building out widths is easy. Adjusting heights is very tricky and hard to do. Especially if there's volume already present, which we would have a lot of if we started from the front. When we work from the profile and neglect the widths, we end up with less volume, making changes to heights very easy to accomplish fast. Once the heights are solid, we can adjust the widths with much more confidence, knowing our heights are more or less where they need to be. It's a little hard to explain exactly why it's easier to adjust the work when it lacks volume, it's a little bit of a, a thing you have to experience, or why widths are easier to change than heights. So you're just gonna have to trust me on this one. Widths are forgiving, Heights are not. So we establish our heights in the easiest way possible first. And the easiest way possible to do it is from the profile view. Another good reason for beginning this way is that the only thing that is going to be very flexible and adjustable, that's the width of the head of course, is not present from the side view. However, everything else is. We have all our heights here. We have all our depths from the side view as well. They are depths from the front view, but from the side view, of course, they are left to right. But we're going to call them depths. So essentially, we can establish everything that we need, except the one thing that's already very flexible and easy, or I should say, easiest to deal with. It's obviously not easy. And this is a major advantage. I have more reasons to start this way, so let's keep them coming. The contour of the profile does for the most part exist on a line. That line runs down the center of the face. 
with the exception of a few places, mainly at the brow, at the upper lip, and where the chin meets the lower lip. But in general, the contour from the profile view runs right down the middle of the face. So it's essentially the center line of the face. So, we are, in other words, already beginning to establish the center line of the face by sculpting the profile, the place that comes the furthest out from the profile view, and that everything else radiates back from. So we are accomplishing a lot by doing this. If you have a more complex pose than I do, my pose is very neutral, but if you have a pose with a head tilt, for example, the profile would need to instantly take into consideration this tilt as it represents the beginnings of the structure of the head. Which we will not get into too much in this episode. We'll deal more with the structure of the head in the next one. So knowing all of this, our goals have expanded somewhat. We want to establish the contour from the profile view. We want to find the heights of our features, and we want to find their depth, or left to right from the side view, of course. If we can accomplish all of that today, we will have gotten very far, and solved a tremendous amount of issues in the very, very first session that we work. Even if we can only get 75% of the way there regarding the accuracy of the profile, the heights of the features and their depth, we will have accomplished a lot. 75% is not a bad goal to, uh, to aim for at this stage. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, consider liking it and subscribing to the channel for more videos. I put out a new video every Thursday, so stay tuned for next week. If you want to support the channel, watch the full one hour video, which this is an excerpt from, fill to the brim with instruction and in detail descriptions of what is going on, Visit the link to my Patreon page in the description below of the video to learn how. Until then, stay creative, and I hope to see you in the next one.